And that leads me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to kind of close up with this. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 3. Paul the apostle said, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through civility, that's craftiness, cunningness, I call it old slick willy. So your mind should not be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ Jesus. Some of us say the simplicity. Now that word simplicity would translate in Greek as devotion. You could title a message here saying Paul was preaching deception versus devotion. Come on. But I don't want to take it from just that look. That word sincerity also or simplicity means sincerity, devotion. But it also means singleness of mind. In other words, Paul takes the church at Corinth all the way back to the garden. And he said, there's a serpent still loose. The same snake that was in Genesis 3 that caused Eve to sin and then Adam to sin, come on somebody, tempting them, and brought sin on the whole human race. The same serpent that bruised Jesus' heel, but the same serpent on the cross that Jesus crushed his head, fulfilling the prophecy in Genesis 3.15 that didn't come through clay lips uh, nor through angelic lips, but God himself declared it. I'm going to put enmity between thy seed and the woman's seed. Hallelujah. You'll bruise his heel, but he's going to crush your head. So this same serpent, somebody shout that old serpent, the devil. Revelation 20 verses 2. A serpent. The devil himself. Paul here warned the church at Corinth. He said, look, he said, this is my fear. Paul was saying, if I've got a fear of any kind, I fear God. But here's the other type of fear I got, that I fear for the modern church of, of his time and we should have for our day. Hey Amen. I fear that the, as the serpent beguiled, twisted up Eve's mind through civility or craftiness and deception, amen, slick williness, I would say, amen, again, hallelujah, that your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity, the singleness that's in Christ. Somebody say simplicity. Now you can go to study in the Greek on words sometimes and miss just simply what simple means. Simple means not complicated. Can we just not complicate it at all? Simple means just plain, uncomplicated, and somebody shout, it's simple. Jesus didn't die on the cross uh, to start a bunch of church leagues. Uh, Jesus didn't die on the cross, come on somebody, for us just to come and gather together and assemble in here and sit down and say, well, we've got a church. Uh, no, Jesus shed his blood on the cross. Uh, John 15 and 13 said, greater love hath no man than this, uh, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody shout, Jesus laid his life down for a friend. In Hebrew or Greek, that word friend means somebody to talk to. Jesus died to talk to you. Jesus shed his blood on the cross uh, to have fellowship with you uh, and with me. Uh, and if we're not fellowshipping with him, uh, if we're not knowing him in that intimate place uh, of prayer and talking to him and him talking to us, uh, friend, we've missed the whole purpose uh, of the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said in John 17 and 3, amen, this is life eternal to know the one true God and his son Jesus whom he has sent. Somebody shout, that's eternal life. It's to know him, not know about him, but to know him, have communion with him, have fellowship with him. Jesus didn't die on the cross to start a church membership program. He died on the cross, amen, to, to have a bride, somebody he could be intimate with. That's the whole purpose. And that leads us back to the altar. That leads us back to our prayer life. When I'm neglecting my time with him to seek him, it's like walking past the cross and not even acknowledging the whole reason he shed his blood. Because wherefore, beloved brethren, have a boldness entered to the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout, it's by his blood. We can come in to where he is closely. 
Ephesians 2, 13, the Bible said, ye who are sometimes afar off are made near by the blood of Christ. It's the blood of Jesus that gives us the free admission, the access uh, to the closeness of God, uh, not some little religious, uh, amen, uh, goody two shoes to do. Uh, come on, do good, uh, amen, on Sunday morning, uh, but to really live with him, know him, be intimate with him, fellowship with him. It's so much more. That's the simplicity. That's the simplicity that a lot of churches lose along the way. That a lot of preachers have lost along the way. That a lot of ministries forget about along the way. How do you know? Because they do more anything but praying when they get together. God told me, he said, I want you to revive midweek prayer service. And that's what we've been doing in the upper room. Some of us started it before we even let any nobody was doing it. And then we started inviting to let people know, hallelujah, and we started off in homes. But it's all recorded. We got it on, on, on audio, and I'll be updating some DVDs and CDs from where we've been and even services today and stuff like that, though I did forget to start the audio, but I can get it off of the video. God help me. Hallelujah. Y'all got to understand right now at this level, I'm a... Uh, Sound man, uh, media man, uh, all the above. Praise God. Hallelujah. Though we do appreciate those that's doing what they're doing. Hallelujah. But I'm, I'm, I'm wearing multiple hats right now. Amen. But that ain't for much longer. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But, 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 but listen. Hallelujah, that simplicity. I've been hearing the Holy Ghost for weeks. Marvin, whatever you do, don't lose your prayer life. Whatever you do, don't let this church uh, lose that simplicity, that place at the altar, that call and that need, uh, amen, to spend time in the altar. Friend, if all we come to do is sing and talk and eat, uh, we ain't a church, we might as well become a restaurant. Uh, hallelujah. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Uh, my God, uh, hallelujah. If y'all ever see us weighing, amen, or waning rather from prayer, you better come to me and even charge me. Uh, hallelujah, because I'm submitted also. We all are one to another, even though God has put me at the head over the house. He's the head over me. Uh, praise God. And if any time you see me going away from it, you better come charge me. We better get the altar going again, Pastor. We need to keep this altar, amen, glory to God, because that's where it's at. Uh, somebody shout, that's the simplicity. Amen, the serpent. Uh, just just as the serpent in Acts 16, amen, glory to God, come, that old soothsayer, praise God, in Paul's day when he was preaching in Acts 16, 18, that he had to rebuke and cast out. That soothsaying spirit was nothing more, amen, glory to God in Acts 16, but that spirit of divination, amen, and in Hebrew or Greek, divination means a, a constricting spirit, like a constrictor, that serpent that constricts its prey, hallelujah, and squeezes the breath out of it until it suffocates to death. And that's what the devil, that old serpent, amen, that beguiled Eve, according to 2 Corinthians 11 and 3 in the beginning in Genesis 3, that Paul was warning the church of, that that would beguile them away from the simplicity that's in Christ, uh, that would constrict us, uh, constrain us. Because, uh, friend, uh, let's face it, uh, amen, the lungs of the church uh, is prayer, uh, amen, uh, and the move, uh, amen, and the breath of the church is the Holy Ghost, uh, and the devil would love, uh, amen, for us to be constricted uh, and suffocate spiritually, suffocate from the things of the Spirit uh, by making us prayerless. Uh, and that's what that Spirit, amen, would love to do, uh, but as long as God gives me breath, as long as Holy Ghost reminds me of what he said that the very foundation of this house is to be, she'll be a praying church. Somebody shout because that's the lungs. And if a church ain't praying, she ain't breathing. And if she ain't breathing, it ain't hard to figure that out. She's dead. Hallelujah. So Lord, we don't want that old spirit, that old serpent the devil to beguile us from the simplicity somebody say the simplicity Ecclesiastes 12 and 12 says too much study and wearies the flesh it does don't it Brianna it does don't it Mr. College man you know you can study and you can study after a while it's like the wires is crossing come on somebody hello 
Listen here, preachers. Listen here, church world. You can study, and you can study, and you can have all, I was about to say the geek, but I meant the Greek, and you can have all the Hebrew, and you can get so caught up. There's some people today got more faith. They, they got the uh, ministry of, what is, what is the word I want to say? Intellectualism, where it's all up here. You can study it and get it all up here. But if it don't get down in here, come on somebody, it sure ain't going to do nothing out there worth remembering. And the only way what's up here can get down in here is right down here. Down here. Right here at the altar. Down before God Almighty. Anybody here Holy Ghost? Brother Bruce, I can study and I can study and then I get so frustrated. And I say, okay, Holy Ghost. I'll lay that Bible down and I'll walk away from it. Hello? Sometimes God don't tell me what I'm preaching. Now, he don't do every ministry life. Sometimes he don't really reveal to me until the moments before. Or sometimes he'll just give me a scripture and give me a thought, and that's pretty much all it'll stay until the mic hits my hand. Now, I'm comfortable operating like that. I feel like I'm in my recliner. So why you don't see me with a book of notes. Now, Brother Michael, he's not like that. He's going to bring a whole book and a half of notes. Hallelujah. And that's okay because everybody's different. There was at one point that I used to carry stuff like that. Hallelujah, but I'm in that season in my walk with him. Come on, somebody, all I would do was frustrate what it is he's wanting to say to through me. And you gotta understand, we've operated for years, amen, up under, amen, not just some title and not just some office, but a calling of a prophet according to Ephesians chapter four. And that's what prophets do. They don't most time know what in the world they're doing. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But I'll tell you what I do know to do, and that's to spend time with God. I don't pray because I gotta preach. Let me tell that, I do not pray because I got to preach. I don't study God's word because I got to preach. And I sure don't gang up on God on Saturday afternoon and night and say, oh God, I got to preach in the morning. I'm not the preacher, but I am the prayer. Had a man tell me one time over sanctified fried chicken, and somebody's thinking about some of it now. Where's that shadow again? Oh, he lost his eye. Well, anyhow. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, man, he said, you preach and I finished this sentence too long. He said, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I said, well, sir, you can preach as long as you pray. In other words, with that said, if you got a prayer life, you won't have no struggle, no problems doing whatever God's called you to do. Whatever he's anointed you to do. Anybody here, Holy Ghost, it's stirred up in prayer. It's stirred up. Hallelujah. You know, that's what prayer does. It stirs you up. When you come to church, you ought to be stirred up. The pastor shouldn't be the only one that's praying before he gets to church. He shouldn't be the only one studying before it's time for church. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost, the worship team. Amen. Glory to God is the church. It should never be just somebody up here. We're not up here trying to get people to join in with us. Amen. A healthy church is a people that's got an altar at home and got a prayer life anywhere they are. And when they walk in the door, their worship's already on. Amen. Glory to God. All the musical facilitating things could fail. Amen. The electricity could go off and they'd still have church. And we're blessed with some acoustics in here until I can get something on the wall. Amen. But I kind of like it. Still sounds like I got some little bit of reverb on here even when I don't. Hey, it makes me sing a little bit more. Yeah. Some of these chairs and the more people gets in here too is going to. You go wrong when you don't get the bunny battery. But I run them dead too. His drum of. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, don't lose the simplicity. In all that God will ever call and require of you to do, he'll never place that above your time with him at the altar. If you lose this, doing all that, you've lost this is that. Because you can't have all that and that's ministry without this. I'm going to end with this because I want to keep it simple. 
Somebody shout, we gotta keep it simple. That's the title of the message this morning on this first morning in this new location, this 37th service. Keep it simple. What's simple? Pray. If we'll pray, God will save people. If we'll pray, God will heal people. If we'll pray, preachers will preach. If we'll pray, come on somebody, teenagers will come to Jesus. If we'll pray, God will pay the bills. Why? Because if we pray, we'll give. The Bible said as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. 2 Chronicles 26 and 5. If we got baskets full of money and bank accounts full of money with no altars being used in prayer, we ain't got a church. Come on, somebody. We just got a local business. But this ain't just some local business. This is kingdom business. Come on, somebody, into God's kingdom, amen, to come in the earth. Hallelujah. We've got to be a people of prayer because was not it in the Lord's prayer that Jesus taught them when he taught them to pray in Matthew 6 and 10? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was teaching them to pray when he said thy kingdom come. And friend, when we pray, that's what comes, his kingdom. And his kingdom is his spirit because Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, my kingdoms come nigh unto you. Matthew 12, 28. So the kingdom of God is Holy Spirit ruling in supremacy. Amen. Not being dominated by denominationalism and man's traditions, but the Holy Ghost freely being able to move. Because when Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer, in Matthew 21, 13, the next thing he did was overturn the table of them that sold doves. Can't you see cages full of white doves? One day I'm going to preach me a message and I'm going to find me about three white doves. I'm going to put them in a cage and it may take us forever to get them out of the house but I'm going to turn them loose and let them fly all over in this place. Come on, we may have to clean up dove dung for a week before we can get them out but I'm going to make my point because when Jesus restored prayer, the dove got loose. Somebody shout the dove's cake. The dove is caged up until the, till prayer is the most important part of that assembly. So let's keep it simple. Mark 3, 13 through 15. Jesus called unto him whom he would. He ordained them to be with him. He sent them forth to preach, heal the sick, and cast out devils. The hand of God. Five. He called them to him. He ordained them to be with him. Somebody say that's the call. And that's the ordination. The ordination or ordaining is the separation. That's what ordain means, to separate. God has called us and separated us. Here it is. Here's the simplicity of it. To himself. Before he called you to preach, he called you to pray. And no matter what he ever calls you else to do, the above all call, the first call, is to seek him. Hello? Because he has called us to the fellowship of his son, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1 and 9. So that's the call. It's the call to pray, the call to fellowship with him. All right? When he called them to him, separated or ordained them unto himself, then he sent them to preach. And listen what they did when they preached. They had power to cast the devil out and he'll see. These devils going to walk through that door. You, if, if, if you ain't joining us on Fast and Friday, you gonna, when they do, you're going to wish you had. Hello. Especially if you ain't never encountered. Listen. Listen to this. He called them to come. He ordained them to stay. Then he sent them to go preach. Heal the sick and cast out devils. So what you see me doing today is what I'm sent to do. This ain't what I'm called to do. This is what I'm sent to do. This comes from the call. Here's what I'm called to do. So are you. We're called to this altar. Whew. That's why there should never be an empty altar service. It's already been used this morning, but the altar, friend, this is the ministry. I had a preacher stand right here, black man, dear saint, met him for the first time, come in here the other day when we was in here, found out we was having a church and he was an evangelist. And uh, he said, you know, the word of the Lord says, greater works shall we do. And I said, yes, John chapter 14, verses 12. 
Jesus said it this way, verily, verily, the works I did, you shall do, and greater works shall you do, and here it is, because I go unto the Father. What happened when Jesus went to the Father? Holy Ghost was sent back. Jesus said, you're going to do greater than I did because I'm limited in my body. But when they crucified me on the cross and I raised myself from the dead and I go back to the Father, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. And the same spirit that was in me is going to get in you, going to get in her, going to get in him, going to get in them. And whosoever comes to the name of Jesus Christ and believes on what he did on the cross, and now look at his body. We're the body of Christ and members in particular, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. The body ain't just Jesus walking around isolated in that one flesh body. Amen. But now the body is believers everywhere. There's the greater works. But listen, listen what he said in verse 13 of John 14. He said, and whatever you ask the Father in my name, I shall do it. Then verse 14, again, whatever you ask in the Father in my name, I'll do it. So after Jesus said, the works I did you're gonna do and greater you're gonna do than this, uh, then the next two things he said, whoever calls on my name, the Father will answer. Somebody shout, the greater works is prayer. Prayer is the greater work. Because without that, there will be no great works. Hallelujah. Somebody say, that's keeping it simple. If you keep that, they won't nothing keep you from him. If you keep the secret place with God and not share it, if you keep that simple thought, amen, about keeping it simple, the altar, the altar, the altar, the altar, hallelujah. Friend, the devil will never, I don't care what he tries to throw you away, he won't take you away from the presence of the Lord, he won't take you away from the things of God, he won't get you out of God's kingdom, hallelujah, he won't get you out of God's will, hallelujah. If the devil can take your altar away, if he can get you and beguile you like the serpent it did Eve. Come on somebody to partake of something else and replace the altar and put it in its place. Hallelujah. He can twist your mind and mess you up and stop you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout with your hands raised. Keep it simple. Keep an altar. Holy Ghost, thank you for your words this morning on this first morning of this new location. Keep it simple. Lord Jesus, house of prayer. House of prayer. Hallelujah.